The story begins with the demon king of the netherworld reciting to his minions the valor of his regime. There will only be destruction, and all that remains will be destruction. He told them that the time of Genesis had arrived and that only deaths and chaos would occur. But there's one more thing that would remain, and those are the survivors. He ordered his devils and beasts to bring these survivors to him, as the followers will be awarded and will join him. In an instant, he and every one of them, orc, beasts, imp, gargoyles, and every other being left that place in search of the survivors to fulfill the Demon King's wish. The scene shifts to another part of the netherworld, which is covered in ashes. In this place of disparity, a demon larva was born. Unaware of its own existence, it wandered around until a status window opened in front of it. Her name was Salvos, a level 1 infant demon of the demonic larva family. She had all of her stats set to default. Looking at all that, she was confused. She looked around and found herself to be the only one in this land. She kept on moving until she stumbled upon a spiky rock. This rock caught her interest as it was very different from the other rocks. Her curiosity for the rocks had made her general skill, identification, go up a level. With her upgraded skills, she once again tried to identify and differentiate between the normal rocks and the spiked ones, but the answer never satisfied her. Because of her curiosity and hunger for knowledge, once again her identification skill leveled up, also increasing her base level, making her a level 2 demon larva. Even though she's growing, she does not know what all of this is about. She doesn't know how to use her skill points and status points. While she was observing her status window, Salvos realized that someone was approaching her. They were other demon larvae just like her. They came near her and started identifying her. They were all of level 1, but some are also of level 2. One of them showed her the fire that she had made from her mana. She became very excited to see that. She learned about it in her status window. In order to use magical fire, wisdom should be used. She used a stat point on wisdom but was still not able to use magical fire. She decided to follow the larva she saw. After walking for some time, all the larvae stopped. Salvos went ahead and saw a bigger infant demon standing there. It was at level 5. The larva with magical fire reached it and tried using her flame on it, but got swatted in a single hit by that larger demon larva. Every single one of them was shocked to see the splattered head of the magic using larva. They froze for a moment, but then the larger demon larva killed others, continuing its chain of massacres. More than the others, Salvo was still confused, asking herself the question, why did it kill her? They didn't know what to do. Some tried to fight back but were brutally killed. Others ran away. Salvo thought of fighting it together with the other smaller larvae, but this decision soon got dumped as the larger larva had reached level 6. By this time, it was much stronger and faster than the other. They had lost all hope against it. They all got chased and killed while they were running away. Salvo got thrown to the side, where she realized that there's a possibility that she can defeat it. She used all of her stat points for wisdom and created magical fire around her using mana. Covered in fire, Salvos dashed into the larger demon and pierced through it like a meteor. She had killed the wild demon. Killing it had granted Salvo three level ups and two new skills, which included basic mana manipulation and fire strike. While she was checking her stats, she saw a reddish demon with spots staring at her. Salvo looked at him while he was curiously staring at her without even blinking. But after some time, Salvo left, and the red demon followed her. She wanted to increase her level, as she felt more complete with each increase in her level. Most of the time, she ran into wild infant demons whom she had to kill because they wanted to kill her. It was more of an act of self-defense than blind murder from her side. Killing these demons was good for her as she was leveling up, but the interference of the red demon caused some problems as the experience gained from killing an enemy with someone else's is half of what it originally was. So because of this, her growth has become slower. She tried to outrun him by increasing her agility stat, but he did the same and kept on following her. In the end, when Salvos got tired of him, the thought of killing him lingered in her mind. But as soon as it did, she remembered the big demon that she had faced for the first time. Killing this red demon without any valid reason will make her wild, just like the other wild demons. She considered herself different from those and decided not to kill him and somehow leave him behind. While they were walking, Salvos saw a group of infant demons, led by a level 9 demon with a horn on his head. They didn't seem wild, so she approached them. The level 9 demon pointed at her as if he were calling her, 
but instead she gave him the red demon who was following her. He nodded in disagreement and pointed at her saying that he wanted her for himself. Salvos didn't understand what he was saying until she got attacked by it. Salvos got attacked by this level 9 demon. All of this happened so fast that she was confused. If she first thought of it as an accident as these demons looked civilized, not like the wild ones, but when he tried to attack her again, his attack was blocked by her companion, the Red Demon. He was the one taking this fight for himself until the Earth Magic, using Demon, started hitting him with rock balls. With a rock ball on his face, he got startled, and the four smaller demons attacked him all together. Azos had now understood that these demons are working in a small community and just want to kill others and increase their level. The bigger one here wanted to kill her all by himself so that he could get the full experience from her. He again started attacking her, but this time her agility came in handy and she dodged all of his attacks and burned him with magical fire. He was angry at her and was about to attack her again, but she saw that the earth magic demon was also about to attack her so she got away from them and dodged both of their attacks. She wanted to kill that magic demon first, but got blocked off by the black horn demon who wanted to kill her himself. But Salvos was now determined to kill that magic demon first. She conjured the magical fire and used it on the black demon to scare him. She took the chance and jumped above him to reach the magic user, dodging the rock thrown by him. She dashed straight into him and punched him in the face with fire in her arms, knocking him out in just one blow. Salvos was now ready to take on the level 9 demon. But when she saw that her companion, the red demon, was getting outnumbered, she couldn't control herself and helped him while also dodging the attacks from the black demon. She took down two demons. They tried hurting her using physical strength, but when Salvos used the magical fire, they got defeated instantly. Even though they could fight more, the black demon arrived and stopped them from fighting Salvos as he wanted to kill her himself. Using his scythe-like arms, he started attacking her, but she dodged all of the attacks and waited until she got an opening. As soon as she saw one, she charged her punch with magical fire and threw it right into the demon's gut, but this was not enough. He was still standing while Salvos had used up almost all of her energy and was now tired. When the black demon was about to attack her again, he got hit by another fiery punch. This time it was from the red demon, the companion of Salvos. She was not alone like the black demon who refused to take help from his subordinates who were all killed by the red demon because of his greed to take all of Salvos' experience for himself. With a fire strike from both sides, the end of this level 9 black devil arrived. Salvo's little had increased, and she had now reached level 9. She also got a new skill called Rest, because of which her wounds were healing faster. When she saw that she had reached level 9, a feeling in her mind propelled her to get to level 10. Even though she didn't know what would happen at level 10, she was eager to reach it with the hope of seeing something invaluable. Salvos, along with her companion, rested at that place for some time. Her wounds healed fast because of this new skill that she had acquired. At level 9, she realized something. She's slowly evolving. She had gotten bigger in size and had limbs, which she didn't have when she was at level 1. There's an unknown certainty that she had. Something big will happen to her when she reaches level 10. She was also thankful to the Red Demon, her companion, who saved her when she got attacked by that Black Demon. If it weren't for him, she would have been dead by now. After that incident, she didn't mind having him around. They both formed a strong team and started defeating all the wild demons. She accepted him as her companion. One day while they were walking, Salvos heard a sound. It was the roar of lesser demons. When they went near, they saw a lot of them taking many infant demon larvae with them. It was the first time she had heard a voice in this place. Using her racial skill, universal language comprehension, she understood what that demon was saying. He was threatening the infant demons to follow them without lagging behind, or they'd be killed. While they were observing them, the red demon told Salvos about a familiar face that they had seen in the beginning. But soon, this group of lesser demons got attacked by another group of lesser demons. They had a bloody death match in which the first group came out victorious. Salvos and the red demon were afraid of the violence of these creatures. One infant demon using the situation tried to run away, but their boss saw him and threw a fiery spear, which pierced him, resulting in his death. He once again told the other infants that they could not run from him, and if they tried, they would get killed just like this one. They all silently followed him. When they left, Salvos went down and checked the spear that the wolf demon threw. It was made of magic, and she inspected it. She found that her identification skill was not up to the level needed to identify the spear. 
After spending some time curiously observing the spear, her identification skill leveled up. She was now able to see the details of the spear. It was the Spear of Flames, a medium-grade weapon made up of magical flames. Reading this text made her realize that she can use this too by merging it with Fire Strike to increase its damage output. Just as she tried to pluck that spear out, she heard a sound. It was a level 15 Hellhound standing right behind them. With the commitment of defeating the Hellhound in their eyes, both the infant demons were terrified to their cores, as it was the first time they had ever faced an enemy like this. This Hellhound was big, strong, fast, and much more powerful than them. He dashed towards them and attacked them with his fierce jaws, but missed since both of them used their agility at the right moment and dodged the attack. Salvos tried hitting him with Fire Strike, but it was ineffective. The Hellhound was pissed off and attacked Salvos, but she dodged all of her attacks, and from behind the Red Demon attacked him. He turned around to face him, but Salvos attacked him with a Fire Strike. Because of this continuous beating from both sides, the Hellhound became cautious and prevented their next attack by slamming Salvos into a wall and throwing away the Red Demon. The Hellhound started circling the Red Demon. Salvos thought of a way to help her companion. She was pulling out the Spear of Flame to use it against the Hellhound, but it was stuck. With a lot of effort, she finally got that out and was ready to use it with Fire Strike. She distracted the Hellhound by throwing some fire at him and waiting for the right moment to come. As the Hellhound pounced on her, she used that spear and aimed it in his mouth, piercing through his head and ending his life. She had finally defeated the Hellhound but depleted all of her strength. In the process, she became unconscious but had also leveled up. In her mind, she received a notification saying that there was an evolution available for her. It was a species evolution from an infant demon to a lesser demon. In the lesser demon category, she had five subspecies evolutions available for her. Salvos was unable to accept these evolutionary paths, and these are not what she is. But when she observed the zealous imp, she accepted it as its abilities looked like hers. A zealous imp is a subspecies of an imp with an affinity for fire. They are small and weak, but highly efficient. Their additional stats include 5 Wisdom, 5 Endurance, and 3 Agility. Salvo selected Zealous Imp, and the evolution began, which also ended in an instant. When she opened her eyes, she saw not only the Red Demon and the Dead Hellhound in front of her, but also the change in her appearance and the sound of her voice. First, she was confused by her own voice, but slowly understood that it was she who devolved into a Zealous Imp, along with her physical evolution. Her skills have also evolved and new skills are being unlocked. It was a completely new feeling for Salvos to stand on her own two legs. She was trying to understand more about her evolution when she saw the Red Demon fearing her and trying to use the Spear of Flame for his own self-defense. She told him about herself and her evolution, and he in a fearful manner reached her as if he had understood her situation. While she was telling him about herself, another level 13 Hellhound arrived, but he was not alone. A complete pack of hellhounds had arrived in front of Salvos. She picked the Spear of Flame and used it with her general tool proficiency skill. Using Fire Strike with the spear, she killed the first hellhound that attacked them, but then they got surrounded. She used her new skill, Fire Blast, and burned another hellhound to death. She picked the Red Demon and ran to their escape using double steps, but they didn't win in against the hellhound speed. Salvo saw the exit and tried reaching it, but it was blocked by a level 22 Hell Beast. She used a Fire Blast on it, but it didn't show any effect. He didn't even flinch. The Hell Beast attacked Salvo's, but she blocked it using the Spear of Flame, which got thrown away because of its impact. When she regained her balance, she saw that the Hell Beast was killing the Hellhounds. She took advantage of the situation and ran away from there, while both the Hellhounds and the Hell Beast were distracted. Because of all the bloodshed they have caused, the Red Demon has leveled up. He has also reached level 10, which means he will also evolve. Salvos took him to a safer place, where she checked her stats. She had reached level 12. She told him not to be afraid of her as she's the same Salvos that she used to be. But when she looked back, she was surprised to see the little Red Infant Demon had evolved into a big, muscular level 10 fiend. The fiend greeted Salvos. She was skeptical of him being the same red demon that he was before. She thoroughly checked him, which made him laugh. Salvos was feeling embarrassed, so she stopped him. He said that her reaction to his evolution was funny. That's why he was laughing. He introduced himself as Hayek. 
Knowing his name made Salvos a lot more embarrassed, as she had never expected him to have a name. She never asked him and always considered him her companion. Hag agreed to this, saying that he had always considered her his leader. He told her that he'd been following her to work, according to her orders. They both protected each other in times of need and leveled up together. Salvos told him that she had always thought that he was following her to steal her kills and kill her when he outlevels her. Adas told her that he never had any intentions like that and will never have any in the future. She asked him what made him follow her as his leader. He said that she had saved his life, and in order to fulfill that gratitude, he's following her to help her. She asked him why he was following the others. He recalled what happened and told her that he was born with them. They were a group from the beginning. That's why he was following them, as they were all part of the same group from their birth. He also told her that she was the only outsider who had joined them. He felt sad, remembering that all of his companions were dead, and he was the only one left. Seeing him sad, Salvos tried cheering him up by reminding him that he's not alone anymore as they are now together. With a slight smile on his face, Hayrick again started following her as they promised each other that they'd live together, fight together, level together, and remain happy. On their way, they fought a giant spider monster, which Salvos killed with her Spear of Flame with a promise to protect Hap Ekas as his leader. After killing the giant spider, Salvos had reached level 15 while Hake had reached level 13. But when they were talking about their levels, they both saw a notification saying that they were entering the Demon King's domain. In the Demon King's domain, Hakes and Salvos were walking. It's been a long time since they were here, but they hadn't seen anyone yet. Hayek was worried if they were just wasting their time here as at the same time they could have found and killed some wild monsters and their levels would increase, but none of that is happening here. Because of this reason, Hayex wanted Salvos to go back, but she was curious about this place as it's the first time they've been out of the netherworld. She wanted to explore this place and was trying to know why it was called the Demon King's Domain. Pei explained to her that he's getting a bad feeling about this place, to which she agreed and decided to go back, saying that there's a high possibility that the demons that they had seen would be coming here, and if something like that happens, they would force them to follow them or could even kill them. There are no certain situations that they could think of, and because of that, it would be better for them to leave this place. As they were about to leave, they saw something coming towards them. It was a level 42 degen. He was a big blue giant welding a ferocious low-tier weapon. Hekek was unable to see his details as his identification skill is not that upgraded, but Salvos told him his details. She also told him that there's a huge power gap between them and they will not be able to beat him. The Jin told them that even the idea of beating him is worthless for them as he's an advanced evolution of their form, a greater demon. Salvos told him that they are not wild demons and will not cause any problems for him. Also, there's no reason for him to attack them. To this, the Jin said that it's not about the reason for which the wild demons kill each other. They do it for their own selfishness, for their greed to level up and become stronger. Salvos told him that the experience he would gain by defeating them would also be of no use to him, since they were very weak compared to him. This is what the Dejin wanted to explain to them. He said that it's pretty uncommon for imps to have this high level of identification skill, and for the fiend to be this big in size is also rare. It could have been because he went through an uncommon evolution, which also makes him valuable. He told them to come with him to meet their king, the Demon Lord, who would reward them. Piesi asked Salvos what they should do. Looking at the situation, Salvos told him to follow the Dejin, because there was no way they could reject him at this point. He was very strong, and there's no chance for either of them to defeat him. She told the Jinn that they'd follow him on a condition. He should first tell them what he will do with them, and then they'll go. The Jinn told her that she had mistook his words as he was not requesting her, saying that he attacked them. He said that he'll receive some good rewards from King Ragnorax if he gives him these lesser demons. Elvo used a fire blast on him, but it was ineffective. He countered this attack using his skill Burning Haze. A dark mist surrounded the area and slowly started burning Salvos. He used his agility to create an illusion in the dark mist and attack Salvos, which he barely dodged. He was about to attack her again, but got hit by Hayek's crushing blow. It also didn't have any effect on him. He gave Hayek an uppercut on the face and threw him away. Salvos rushed to help him. She used the Spear of Flame, 
which surprised the demon, as a lesser demon welding a medium-grade weapon was a very big deal. Even he himself does not have a medium-grade weapon. He used his attack called Sphere of Ash and Cinder and hit Salvos. She was injured but alive, but then again he was about to use it. This time he was interrupted by Hayek, who told Salvos to run. She saved herself, and the Jun took Hay with him leaving a trail of blood behind. Salvos came back to the netherworld. She was depressed as her only companion, whom she had promised to protect, had been taken away because of her. But instead of spending her time in remorse and guilt, she decided to get Hapek back, as he was the only one who had acknowledged her as Salvos and not as another demon. Now it was her duty to fulfill her promise and protect her companion. In order to fulfill this promise, she needed strength, and for that, she killed a wild zealous imp. With the experience gained from that imp, Salvos was now ready to find Hayek. She went back to the Demon King's domain and followed the trail of blood that Hayek left. Following the blood, she reached a place called Lucerna's Lamp. It was Dijin's lair that she was about to enter. She prepared herself and went inside sneakily. There she saw Hayek trapped in a cage. He was grumbling about the fact that an imp was wielding a greater weapon than him. Hayek told him that a medium-grade weapon didn't sound that powerful to him. The djinn told him that a weapon gains its value because of its creator, and the weapon that Salvos is wielding must have been created by an archdemon. He instructed Hayek to remain silent and not ask any questions when he presented him in front of King Ragnarx. But before taking him to the king, he went to complete the contract but didn't like the sacrifice that they had given him. He was expecting a complete family but was given only a virgin girl. Behind him, Salvo reached the cage and was trying to open the lock, but when she heard that the djinn were taking Hayek to the king before the contract, she used her spear, broke the lock, and ran away with Hayek. To stop them from escaping, the djinn used his dark sphere attack. But before he completed the incantation, Salvos hit him with the spear which injured him. He took the spear for himself and attacked them. They dodged the attack and Salvos countered it using fire strikes. He got furious and attacked her with burning haze. This time, his attack was a success. Salvos was lying on the ground and Lucerna was about to land the final blow. But she collected all of her strength and used double step to jump over the djinn, startling him. In midair, he caught her and took her with him out of his lair, out of the Demon King's domain, and out of the netherworld. In the end, they reached a new world, the Mortal Realm. For the completion of his contract, he was summoned by the members of a cult. But they had never expected him to come with a zealous imp. Lucerne and Salvos had arrived in the Mortal World. They were surrounded by cultists. Their leader was happy to see that his summoning was more successful than he had expected, and because of it, they had gotten two demons instead of one. Salvos observed the place and found many humans that were higher leveled than her. She wanted to escape from that place. The leader of the cultists ordered Lucerna to fulfill his wish. He told him a long story about a girl he loved. He, after facing many difficulties, finally managed to agree with her father for their marriage. But the next day, she fell in love with a gold-ranked adventurer named Nola. Since her father was against their relationship, she ran away with Nolan, the adventurer, and his party. Now the cult leader, Chris, wanted Lucerna to destroy that party of adventurers and Nolan. But the other cultists felt deceived as Nolan told them that he'd summon the demon to take revenge on the greedy King Hale because of his unfair tax collections. Lucerna angrily shouted and started attacking them as the ring in his neck had been broken. Salvos took the chance and made an attempt to escape from that place. Chris, along with the other cultists, tried stopping her, but using fire blasts and fire strikes, she somehow managed to get to the exit. Chris ordered Lucerna to stop Salvos, but he didn't listen to him and roared angrily while throwing fists at the ground. At the exit, Salvos faced a level 23 mage who attacked her. She dodged her attacks easily and used fire strikes to defeat them. Using double steps, she finally came out of the cave and disappeared into the forest. Many cultists were chasing her, but they ended their chase as it was already pretty dark and she had gone into the deeper parts of the woods. Salvos was running blindly until her foot got hit by a rock and she fell down. While lying on the ground, she saw three new achievements that had granted her bonus stat points. She was tired, so she fell asleep and woke up in the morning. She was surprised to see the mortal world so very different from the netherworld. While she was observing this world, a dark wolf appeared in front of her, whom she thought to be a hellhound. 
but then realized that it was not what she had thought of. A level 18 dark wolf was in front of her. She was being cautious as she had never seen a creature like this. Although it resembled the hellhound, it was different. The dark wolf attacked her, but she dodged and countered this attack with her fire strike. The level 18 dark wolf was defeated in just one blow. Salvos gained experience. Her only goal was to get back to the netherworld and back to Hayek. She was determined about it but got a little distracted on the way by the new creatures that she was seeing in the forest, but she again got her mind together and focused on her goal. Curiosity and questions about this world and the things in it filled her head. The most confusion she had was because of the sky. The sky that she knows is only red, but here it changes color every now and then. She was also continuously being chased by dark wolves. Even though they were weak, they were not losing their target and kept coming again and again. Salvos reached level 19 by killing more than a dozen wolves. While on her way, she saw another wolf lying on the ground. It was a normal wolf with no levels. When she reached it, she was surrounded by many dark wolves. This time, a level 30 dark wolf faced her, which was the leader of the pack. She told that wolf that the other members of his pack had attacked her first, and that's why she killed them. She said that she'd kill them too if they attacked her, and so she did. The leader went into the shadows and attacked her from behind. Seeing that the normal wolf who was injured helped her by attacking that dark wolf, she chased him away and showed her gratitude to Salvos. She asked the wolf if she knew the way to the netherworld, but she showed a negative gesture saying that she didn't know. Salvos then asked her if she knew someone who would know about it. To this, the wolf pointed to her right side. Salvos understood that she wanted her to go that way. She thanked her and left in that direction. The next morning, Salvos found a road used by the villagers. She saw two of them on a carriage and asked them if they knew how she could reach the netherworld. When they looked back, they got scared as it was a demon Calvo standing behind them. They left the carriage and ran for their lives. Salvos was confused. She didn't know why the people were running away, begging for their lives. After hearing their words, she got the vague idea that they would have thought that she was attacking them. One by one, she met many humans, but every single one of them started screaming and shouting at the mere sight of her. She was asking them politely, but it was of no use. She thought that it was some kind of greeting method that humans use, but then she thought of the cultists who didn't run away when they met her. She thought that it could have happened because the cultists knew that she's not a wild demon like the others, and normal humans are not aware of that fact. Making this reason the basis of her approach, she reached the city, surrounded by the high walls. At the entrance of the city, a citizen was telling a soldier about this incident in which he saw a demon imp. But the soldier told him that the reports that they had gotten stated that there was a bigger demon who caused chaos and destruction. While they were talking, the man saw Salvos and told the soldier that the demon had followed him. Salvos tried cheerfully greeting them, but they didn't listen. Soldier told the civilians to hide and inform the guild about it. Salvos told them that she wouldn't hurt them because she's not a wild demon. But no one listened to her and started shooting arrows at her. She dodged the arrow. Another warrior faces her. She again tells him that she'll not hurt him unless he attacks him. But the same happens and she ends up using fire strike to kill that soldier. In an instant, she was surrounded by other warriors and a level 18 mage. She used double step to evade their attacks until the adventurers of the guild arrived. She observed their levels along with her surroundings and found herself in a very unfavorable situation. She got hit by the mage's lightning magic because she had been distracted by the adventurers. The injured soldiers used healing potions, and soon their numbers also increased. Salvos knew that she would not be able to handle this many people, so she escaped from there. Back in the forest, this incident reminded her of her time in the netherworld, where every creature just wanted to kill her except Hapkak. She reminded herself that she needs to find a way to go back to the netherworld. And if the people of this world are not telling her about her return, then she should just forcefully get the answers out of them. While strolling in the forest at night, Salvos encountered many dangerous monsters, and due to these encounters, she reached level 23. She killed stags, beetles, golems, etc., until she met a man. A man she couldn't identify was a warrior, but both his rank and level were hidden. She thought that this man should be very high leveled, as that should be the only reason why her identification skill is not working on him. The man asked her if she was the one who had attacked Silvergrove and Fairdale, but without waiting for her to give a reply, he charged into her. Salvos tried explaining to him that she hadn't killed anyone other than these monsters. For a moment, the warrior processed what he had just heard and asked her if she could talk. 
She talked to him and told him that she'd not hurt her and that she only wanted to go back to the netherworld. Not believing in her words, the warrior attacked her. She dodged the attack and took his sword. Using the sword, she again tried to tell him about her situation, but he was so determined to defeat her that he didn't even listen and used quick strike on her. Now that Salvo was angry, she used double stepping and then hit him with a fire strike. This time she caught him and for the last time told him her reasons and situation and also cleared the air that she wasn't the one who killed people in Silver Grove and Fairdale. She knocked him down and when he woke up he saw Salvos wearing his ring. This ring protects the user from some damage so she took that. She told him that she had defeated him and hadn't killed him just because she wanted him to tell her where the netherworld is. He said that he didn't know where it was. He thought that Salvos would kill him for this answer but she let him go. He asked why she's letting him go to this and she said that she knows he'll not attack her again and if he does then she'll kill him. As she was leaving the cave he stopped her and again confirmed that she was not the one who killed the people in these two villages. When she said no, he told her that he could help her go back to the netherworld. The warrior told her that he'd try his best to find a way for her to go back to the netherworld. She thought of it as a lie since he used the word try, but he explained about it saying that he himself doesn't know about it but he'll find someone who knows about it. He told her that their next destination was a nearby city called Hazelbury. On their way, the warrior introduced himself as Daniel, and Salvos told him her name. He gave her his cloak of shadows to prevent people from knowing that she's a demon. He also gave her a necklace, which altered her identity from an imp to a rouge. This way, people will not be able to identify her. On their way, Salvos asked him many questions, which Daniel answered most of, but when they reached the city, they were asked if they were members of the Iron Champion Company. He said no and paid the fees to enter the city. Since the members of the Iron Champion Company can have various facilities in the city, most of the adventurers are associated with them. And since their authority over the city and its outskirts prevailed, they stayed in an inn where Daniel answered most of her questions regarding adventurers, dungeons, monster lairs, the money system, etc. He also told him that he was hired to kill Stampede Elks, but by the time he reached the place, Salvos had already killed them. At the end, Daniel became tired, so he told her that they'd look for a way to the netherworld tomorrow. But Salvos didn't understand the concept of sleep and why it is necessary for humans to sleep. At night, Salvos used the identification skill on the clock, which said that it tells time. But she got frustrated as it was not telling her what time it was. So she broke that. The next morning, Daniel brought her some clothes to make her look more like a human and told her that they were going to the Adventurer's Guild. At the entrance, he used the Necklace of Greater Obfuscation to hide his true level and changed it to level 15, saying that it was because of some complexities. They entered the Guild, where they saw many adventurers. He asked about some information from the Guild Lady but got interrupted by a fellow adventurer named Blake, who was making fun of him. He looked at Salvos and saw that she was a level 23 rogue. He invited her to join the Iron Champion Company, saying that she would get access to various perks through which she could level up easily. Salvos refused to join them. Blake forcefully asked her why she was with Daniel. Because of his rough attitude, Salvo punched him in the nuts and took Daniel out of the guild. Outside, Daniel asked her why she attacked Blake. She told him that she hated his forceful behavior because it reminded her of someone she hates, loose or not. And that's why. Daniel reminded her that she had said that she would not hurt anyone. She told him that she had said not to kill anyone. Daniel told her that she hit Blake in a weak spot and asked her not to hit him there. He said that she couldn't promise that and she asked him where they were going next. He said that first they'd visit the library and then go to the temple. They went to the library. Salvos was amazed by the number of books kept there. They spent a lot of time there searching for a solution, but all they got was disappointment. They came back with the temple as their last hope and went there. Daniel was disappointed. Salvos was frustrated, but still they went to the temple. The temples of this world are the places where good-natured creatures called spirits are summoned which form contacts with humans and help them. Like demons from the netherworld, spirits are summoned from the spiritual plane. Entering the temple, they met a priest. Daniel asked him about the summoning ritual. He told them that not all temples can be used for summoning purposes. These are the special ones, having summoning pools that act as a portal that connects the mortal realm with the spiritual plane. Through these portals, spirits enter our world and help the summoner. In the pool of water for the first time, Salvo saw her face. 
When Daniel asked the priest more about the summoning process, he asked him what he wanted this information for. Just then, a level 42 beastkin named Sakura arrived there. She was the guardian spirit serving the temple since it was built. Seeing the priest being all playful with her, he asked if it was okay for him to do that, as beastkins are usually worshipped by the people. The priest told them that they share a mutual bond with the beastkins, and because of that, they all live happily. Again, the priest asked Daniel why he needed the knowledge of summoning. He lied to him, saying that they wanted to send the demon causing havoc in the city back to the netherworld. When asked, Sakura told them that they should not waste time finding alternatives and kill the demon while they still had time. If he becomes stronger, then no one will be able to defeat him. She said that only one being could live, whether it be the demon or the humans, saying that she left from there. The priest told them that spiritual summoning is very different from demonic summoning. Unlike spiritual summonings, demonic summonings require a sacrifice. They are short-term and it's also up to the demon whether he wants to go back or not. Sometime later, they left the temple. The information that they got was not useful for them, but Sakura's words remained in Salvo's mind. Remembering them gave her a hint. She told Daniel that she was accidentally summoned here with Lucerna a greater demon who's causing chaos in the city. She also told him that it was summoned by some cultists in order to kill some kings. Daniel angrily said that she should have told him sooner. He was making haste to tell the guild about Lucerna being a greater demon, and by mistake, he called Salvos a liar. Hearing that she punched him in the nuts and told him that she did not lie, she doesn't even know anything about this world. She called him a liar, as he had said that he'd send her back to the netherworld, but hadn't fulfilled his word. He apologized to her and said that he'd definitely find a way for her to return. They went to the guild where Blake was preparing the adventurers for a battle as the demon was seen in Maplewell City. Hearing this news, Salvos and Daniel left for Maplewell in order to find Lucerna. Because of him, she is here, and he will be the one to take her back, so finding his was necessary. At Maplewell, they saw the whole city burning in ashes. All the gold rank adventurers were dead. Daniel went inside to look for survivors, while Salvos wanted him to help her look for Lucerna. Daniel refused to help her, saying that looking for survivors was more important. They found a woman barely clinging to life. She was a level 45 mage. He gave her a healing potion. He left her with Salvos and started finding others. Even that lady woke up and asked about her teammates. Daniel came back and told her that she was the sole survivor of this town and that everyone else was dead. This shocked her to the core. They spent the night in a broken house. Her name was Edith. She told them that they didn't come here to fight a demon but to look for a newly found dungeon that the Iron Champions were keeping for themselves. She's a summoner, but her Holy Spirit, with whom she had partnered for such a long time, has died, along with her friends. She started crying. Daniel tried comforting her, but Salvos asked her why she was crying. This made her furious, but Daniel handled the situation. It told them that they were attacked by surprise, as there was no chance of a level 50 demon defeating her party. Salvos thought to herself that Lucerna was not level 50 when she saw her last time, and jumping from his level to 50 is a big feat in itself in such a short time. Edithi wants revenge, but Daniel suggests she go to sleep as it is already pretty late. They decided to keep an alternate watch to prevent monsters from attacking the dead bodies, but Salvos told them that she'd keep the watch and wouldn't sleep. She told her that she was a demon herself and showed her her horns. She was terrified and started screaming. Edithi was terrified when she realized that Salvos wasn't joking around and telling the truth about her being a demon. She attacked her, which Salvos dodged, but Daniel prevented her from killing Edith. He told her about the whole situation and tried to convince her. After a very long time, it seemed that she had understood the situation. They both went to sleep, but in reality only Daniel was sleeping, as Edith did not trust her at all. Salvo stayed up the whole night guarding these two while continuously practicing her fire creation magic. The next morning, Salvos proved to them that she could keep the watch without even tiring out. Just then, a Vurot arrived and started eating dead bodies, which grossed her out. She said that eating is a weird process. On their way, Salva saw a bird, which she tried to befriend, but it flew away. Daniel told her that everyone is not like her and is curious in a sense. She said that she could see that while pointing at Edithi and saying that every human wanted to kill her. Daniel apologized to her for Edithi and also for what he had done to her earlier. 
Salvo said that it's okay now as he's also helping her out, and that's what matters. She asked why they were going back to the city instead of looking for Lucerna. He told her that these three at this moment are not in any condition to handle a level 50 greater demon. Also, EDA had lost her summoned spirit, so she's almost useless at the moment. When she asked about Edithi's spirits, Daniel told her that she's a summoner mage who summons spirits, and the spirits fight for them, earning and granting experience for both of them. He said that it would be like demon summonings, but since he's not a summoner, he can't say that with surety. ED was already angry. She let out all of her pent-up anger by saying that both of these things are very different, like heaven and hell. She called him bad because he compared the sacred rituals of summoning spirits with the hellish sacrificial methods of demon summonings. She also yelled at him, saying that he should not remain that friendly with her. Salvo said that she's not an object. She's a living being with feelings. Edithi asked her how many humans she had eaten. Daniel tried to calm her down, but now Salvo's is also in a mood to carry on this argument. She again told her that she's not a thing and that she hadn't eaten anything, let alone a human. But Edithi didn't listen to her and angrily put up her staff to attack Salvos. She was also ready to battle. She said that she should have killed her last night. She's not different from other wild creatures who just want to kill each other. Edithi's water magic against Salvos' fire magic was about to become a thing, but it got interrupted by an explosive arrow that came out of nowhere. They were bandits. A level 31 warrior and a level 25 archer were in front. The warrior was their boss. The archer told him that the mage had put up a barrier just before the impact of the explosion. There's no possibility of knowing if they are alive or not since the smoke hasn't cleared out yet. On the other side of the smoke, EDD was lying on the ground. Daniel rushed to help her. The warrior ordered another warrior with a shield to take out the mage while they all killed the other two. He said that their problem is the rogue as the warrior is still very low level. He said that he would have run away by now looking at their levels. While he was talking, the archer silenced him, saying that the rogue had gone. She was not there. Salvos used a fire strike on the boss. Another warrior attacked her, but she dodged it along with the arrows that were shot by the archer. The boss was startled by her surprise attack. Taking advantage of the situation, Salvos reached him using double steps and finished him with another fire strike. The whole group was shocked to see their boss go down like that. All of them surrounded her and attacked together, but she dodged them all, and the bandits were struck with another attack. It was Edithi's magic that took down the archer. Another bandit used double stop, which Salvos blocked. But when the shield warrior used the draw attention skill, Salvos' attention was drawn there, and because of it, she got hit by his shield blow. The rogue with knives was about to attack her, but she was stopped by Salvos. She had recovered from the impact and was now ready to kill them all. He defeated the rogue and killed the shield warrior with his own shield. Salvos arrived at the scene and killed the bandit mage who was attacking Edith. She also sliced the archer who was shooting arrows. Killing this many enemies had given her a huge increase in her experience, leveling up most of her skills. Salvos reached Edith, who was about to thank her for saving her life, but before letting her complete what she was saying. Salvos nut punched her declaring that she's Salvos, different from other demons, especially the wild ones. He told her that these people that had attacked them, along with all the humans that were trying to kill her from the very beginning, were all humans, but she had understood that all of them were different, from bandits to citizens to Daniel. She treats them all differently and tells her that she's also different from all the other demons. She also told her that if she treats her like an object, she'll do the same with her. She'll use her like a weapon, an object to protect herself or something to increase her level. She finally said it straight. She wants her to treat her like salvos, not like a demon monster or object. And if she does not do that, she'll forcefully make her do it. Edith said that she understood what she wanted to say. With that, Salvos was happy and pumped up to reach the city, become strong and find Lucerne, which would ultimately let her go back to Hayek, to the netherworld, to her home.